Welcome to the American Intelligence Medium. My name is, well, what is my name today? Uh, my name today is Douglas Gabriel because I'm interviewing Michael McKibben from Leader Technologies. We're going on with our conversation and we thought that we'd give you uh, a few short audios on one or two of the boy kings because you brought up this concept of boy kings in a recent conversation, Michael, with that we were just having. And I want to go into Peter Thiel and Eric Schmidt and then we're going to go into the person I call the evil one. So we're going to do three short videos. Will you? Are you amenable to that? Sure. And again, thank you for being with us. We're trying to wrap up uh, this series and uh, kind of conclude these conversations that we're having uh, with Michael McKibben from our previous six videos we had with him down in his Leader Technology headquarters. And now he's come to visit us and we are just thrilled that he's with us. So I just want to put something out here. And as we talk about these boy kings, let's talk for a minute about Peter Thiel. Is that the way you say his name? I'm not sure. To you, Thiel or Thiel? Okay, that dude scares me. I heard him give a talk two days ago, and he said, crush all competition. There could be no competition at whatsoever. There's only one business plan, and that business plan is a monopoly. Uh, he was PayPal. It was a monopoly. Can you tell us about who this Peter Thiel really is? I first encountered Peter Thiel in reading the official transcript of the story of how Zuckerberg left Harvard and went out to California to ostensibly start Facebook. And the official story is that Peter Thiel uh, was the first venture capitalist to give Zuckerberg a half million dollars to continue developing the Facebook uh, platform after they started it on February 4th of 2004. So for years, I believed that story. What I now believe is that, that uh, Mr. Theo was a part of a much larger enterprise that was, uh, for which uh, Zuckerberg was a cutout, that was very intentionally taking the next, next step in their earlier PayPal experiences, and they were continuing to develop not only the Facebook platform, but as we now know from public, uh, public disclosures, uh, he was also developing a, a company called Palantir with Palantir Software with another gentleman by the name of Joseph Lansdorf uh, that was uh, contracted by the NSA to carry on the work that they had done in PayPal that was essentially tapping into people's personal computers ostensibly uh, to attack credit card fraud, but it was in fact a tool that the NSA was developing. So really, as they were supposedly protecting you when you used your credit card online, they were actually taking over control of your computer, grabbing your information and controlling their marketing psyops uh, patterns which go in and manipulate your mind in so many ways we can't even enumerate today. I see. So he's Well, I think that's a reasonable extrapolation of that. Once you have the power to tap into somebody's computer, my experience with technologists is they're very they're very interested in problems and they don't necessarily care whether those problems are moral or not whether they're ethical or not if you have the capacity to do it the general assumption in the tech world is they're going to do it was he part of ibm eclipse the evil group that stole what you created is what we now call social media oh i'm i'm totally confident of that yes and okay so then from the beginning and and i had said this screaming and yelling for years. My good friend John over there can probably verify this. I said, PayPal has to be controlled by the NSA. Because I'll tell you, I That's admitted. Codes. That's public record. Okay. And we know that Palantir... Palantir is the, is the carry-on. ...is 100% publicly states they work for the NSA. Right. That's on their website. So they're corporate intelligence. Yes. But So they're basically immune from the law. It would appear so. And PayPal, which was there early on, even before social networking, as you explained to me, and I couldn't understand this, it wasn't that complicated of a system, but it was secure. Who could have secured it for them? Because I'll tell you what, I broke codes of Russia. I broke many codes. And I can tell you that anybody who wrote the code to protect PayPal had the ability to go in later <laughs> and rip them off. And they were never ripped off. And because they were never ripped off, I, in my little heart, was convinced that they were 100% NSA 
from the get-go. It was Teal and three other big moguls now who are also, you know, huge, powerful yeah, the, tech the, moguls, right? The, the term uh, PayPal uh, sold all of the principals, uh, and this is all public record, sold their stock in 2001. And that included people like um, James Breyer, James W. Breyer, uh, Peter Thiel, uh, Reed Hoffman, Matt Kohler, uh, Joseph Lonsdale, and others. And so the, 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 the official information is that they were out kicking around for the next big project. And uh, it appears that we came along and became their next project. And uh, the boy king, Peter Thiel, was the as an insider for Facebook. He made billions off of that recently. He, he is still a director. Oh. He's been a director and continues to be a director. Oh, I didn't know it was that blatant. Oh, yeah. Okay. And so he was the insider at Facebook. He was the insider at all of these when they came out. And then when they went uh, with their IPOs onto the stock market, they made billions. And they even had, if you explained, some of these people pulled their money out immediately, which should have been illegal, but they allowed them to On do day this. three, most of the key insiders dumped something like over $16 billion worth of their stock on day three of the IPO. Peter Thiel goes way back because he invested a quarter of a million in Google when Google first went uh, public. And then he made billions off of that. Let's remember, Google was nothing more than two guys who were part of a team of 12 guys or so who were part of uh, a military program just attempting to figure out you know, Page and Bryn simply came up with uh, a, one way to address uh, places on the Internet. Well, I, I think that And then they were given infinite money to buy everything looking and become back, a monopoly, they, they, exactly they, as Teal wants every one of these tech companies to be a monopoly. They were the, the Stanford story. So they had a Harvard story with Zuckerberg. Oh. They had a Stanford story with Page and Brent. So they oh. had uh, oh, yes. the, 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 these boy kings. They needed a public front. I see what you're saying. And, yes. and I, boy kings is not my word. That was a book written by Catherine Loss, who was Zuckerberg's uh, former speechwriter. Well, they're all so cute. I just want to take each and every one of them home with me. No, they're just a collective genius. Oh, that's right. They are dropouts from Harvard and everywhere else who, you know, were placed in these jobs one after the next, which nobody could have ever gotten, especially with their resume. And they rose to the top in monopolies that now they don't go to work anymore. I have never once ever, ever seen dude Zuckerberg at work. He doesn't work. He says he doesn't write code anymore. Oh, so the greatest code writer in history does not write code anymore. Oh, okay. I believe that. And I believe Teal, and I believe the guy at Instagram, and I believe all those guys. They're just, as you say, they're just these wonderful geniuses. Well, Reed, Reed Hoffman was another one of those uh, PayPal mafia folks. Yeah. And he runs LinkedIn. Well, you can tell that they're trustworthy because they wear tennis shoes and just T-shirts and hoodies. And that's how you know you can trust them, right? Well, it, it, it's, a, it's a whole Silicon Valley theme that uh, the mainstream media in Hollywood picked up on because what most people out in everyday America working hard don't understand how all of this unseen technology works. So they're, they have a tendency, a tendency just to accept these explanations that these guys all must be brilliant, they all must be... Uh, eggheads and they all must be successful because of their skills when in fact probably none of them have the skills that they purport to have. But it makes us trust them and it's all about trust. This Bitcoin is all about trust. Look at what's happening there. Remember there was supposed to be a cryptocurrency with Facebook and so we were supposed to trust dude Zuckerberg and give him all of our money and create a new currency that would you know skirt around paying taxes and so on and so forth. And so it was a globalist attempt and they use these uh, boy kings as these cardboard cutouts, whether it be Bezos, who we went over just the other day, whether it be Teal, who just listen to what that man has to say. And by the way, he supported Trump because I say, in my unhumble opinion, that he was the insider from the Eclipse group that tried to get to Trump to see what Trump was doing. They needed a man on the inside, and he was the man on the inside. He isn't really for Trump anymore. Remember when he got up and walked out and he said, that's it, you know, he's done with Trump because Trump didn't support Charlottesville because Charlottesville was such a terrible thing and the white supremacists were coming after <laughs> us and we needed to... Oh, sorry, Thomas, I get really stop. upset about Charlottesville. It was, you know, oh, that was Black Lives Matter trying to kill people in Antifa with masks coming from Ukraine with Ukrainian flags and Ukrainian slogans, the fascists who were supported by 
Joe Biden, whose son Hunter is now on so, a, the, the so largest board of oil. I d- in, in, just had oh, a sorry. crazy thought. I, I I'm going to ask you about this I, crazy I get thought. Away. One of the reasons we see such uh, illogical craziness out there in the mainstream media is it, it seems to me now, as an engineer, that what we're seeing is the wheels coming off of all this mind control experimentation that has been going on, as we now know, for 50, 60, 70 years. And as the wheels fall off, we get these these throw-off stories and different false flags and, and the like, uh, because, in fact, the system that was humming along for so long, the system of propaganda is now not working anymore. And as it continues not to work, they start throwing out more random stories, and it gets more illogical. Am I way off? Oh, no. Matter of fact, I'm seeing an image, and it's the best images I, I, I've had in weeks. I see a bus, and the wheels are coming off, and jumping out the windows are John Podesta, Tony Podesta, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, Rod Rosenstein, Bob Muleface, as I like to call him, uh, and James Chandler, and Teal, and Dude Zuckerberg, and the whole group. There was a person jumping out every window because the deep state bus (laughs) has got the wheels coming off. Mm. Thank you for helping uh, give us a picture of that cardboard cutout of Peter Thiel.